Okay, Mr. Mayor, we are live. Great. So uh, today is December 16th and it is 728 and we are moving to open our regular virtual meeting. Um, so we're calling an order and then I believe we have an invocation by uh, Father Mike. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's bring Good evening, class. Father. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Father. Okay. Let's take a moment to bring our, some, some calm. Everybody's kind of rushing, so bring a moment of calm. And this prayer is called the Coronavirus Prayer for the Weary Winter. God lighted the world. You understand what it's like to feel alone in the midst of great suffering. Remain with us as we continue to endure the coronavirus pandemic. Awaken our hearts as we bear witness to the sickness, the sacrifice, even death. In these dark months, we cry, how long, O Lord? Help us to watch and pray for signs of your hope. We long for a world returned to normal. Inspire us to work toward a world transformed. When we feel forgotten and lonely, help us to find solidarity through your love. When we cannot see your face, help us to see you and others especially essential workers, first responders, and medical professionals who labor tirelessly. When we feel only sorrow in our souls, help us to know that the joy of the gospel remains as true now as ever. When we feel only grief in our hearts, help us to find consolation knowing that those who are sick or have died are held to your loving embrace. As you walk through this time of darkness, Give us faith that we are headed toward brighter days. Give light to our eyes. Let us show that light to one another. Even in winter, when the ground appears barren and is warm by the light of your creation, seas are nourished and green shoots are pushing up toward the sun. God, be our light. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you, Father Mike. I appreciate you uh, coming on to our meeting. I know uh, Pastor Flores is also here as well. And pa Pastor, if you'd like to give us a few words, I, I, I welcome you to do so. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, por favor, en español, está bien. Uh, y el Dios de paz que resucitó de los muertos a nuestro Señor Jesucristo, el gran pastor de las ovejas, por la sangre de pacto eterno, os haga aptos en toda obra buena para que hagáis su voluntad, haciendo él en vosotros lo que es agradable delante de él por Jesucristo, al cual sea la gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Flores. At this moment, I believe we are moving on to, is it, uh, our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, would you be kind enough to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, if you can please stand up and put your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, States of, America States of America, America and to the republic for which we stand, for which we stand. one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, liberty for, all. And justice for all. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, City Clerk Garcia, would you please uh, do roll call? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council Members Daniel Damien. Here. Council Member Monica Garcia. Here. Council Member Paul Hernandez. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Alejandra Avila. Here. And Mayor Emmanuel Estrada. Here. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, City Attorney Robert Tafoya, would you please uh, report out from closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the City Council considered uh, multiple items in closed session. Uh, direction was given, but no final action was taken. Therefore, there is no reportable item, and that concludes my report. Great. Thank you. And at this moment, I uh, make a motion to adjourn our uh, uh, special, uh, special City Council meeting. Is there a second? Second. Second. Great. Any objections? No. And I believe that is a 5 0 to adjourn. That meeting is adjourned. Uh, and Mr. I Mayor? Believe, no, uh, yes, Mr. Hernandez? We also have our treasurer on the line. Oh, okay. 
Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hello, Marie. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hello, hello, City Treasurer. Thank you. And I believe at this point we are making announcements. Uh, do any council members have any announcements to make? <laughs> Mayor. Yes, Council Member Garcia. Oh, thank you. Uh, I would like to close on behalf of former Council Member Raul Martinez, a longtime resident of the city of Baldwin Park. And uh, he was raised in the city and raised his family in the city. Uh, became a council member uh, for our city and, and just had a, a big heart for his community, always wanting what was the best, always chiming in, um, you know, for the betterment of our community. And he uh, unfortunately passed suddenly uh, over the weekend, uh, leaving his family who he loved so dearly. And he was always so proud of, um, you know, it was Clearly the, you know, his family was um, his greatest priority, his, the apple of his eyes. And he was so, he was so proud of them um, and was constantly sharing their achievements and their most recent um, life happenings on social media. And I just want to close on his behalf. And he, he's such a dear person. Um, you know, his footprints are all over this community and he will be remembered uh, just for the kind, the kind man that he was and, and the big heart that he had for his community and for his family. And if anybody else wants to chime in, feel free, because I know that city clerk uh, Marlene Garcia uh, worked closely with, with Raul. And so feel free to chime in if you have any other words um, as we close on his behalf. Thank you, Council Member Garcia. Yes, uh, Raul Martinez definitely was a strong supporter of community and the services that were provided uh, in our community. They actually, that group that when he served uh, back in the early 90s uh, was the group that set the platform for the improvements that we see in Baldwin Park today. I remember in 1993 when I was appointed to the Parks and Rec Commission, uh, he was on the council and, um, and they did tremendous amount of work in cleaning the community in uh, ensuring that we had a strong public safety program, uh, ensuring that the community's quality of life improved uh, despite the challenges that they faced at that, at that time. I think uh, he had a very uh, deep desire and genuine heart and interest in the community and, and they set the platform for the work that uh, continues on to this day. So he will be sorely missed. Our deepest uh, thoughts to his wife, Martha, his children, J Desiree and Jonathan, and his grandchildren. Uh, he will be definitely sorely missed. Thank you. Any other council members wishing to close on behalf of anybody? Mayor? Yes? Mary. I would like to close in, close in memory of Joe Orozco, he was one of the pioneer seniors. He was a very involved man with the community. He was uh, the king of the prom. He was always there for whatever anybody needed. He just passed away a week ago, like suddenly, and uh, he'll be greatly missed. Like I said, he was a gentleman, a true gentleman, and a true active member of the community. He will be sorely missed. Thank you. Um, any other any other council members or um, elected? Yes, officials? Mayor. Yes, uh, Council Member Avila. Yes, I would like to close in behalf of uh, my friend's sister. Her name is, uh, was Belinda Polinario. She passed away at a very young age, leaving behind a son. And um, my condolences to the family. It's been a very difficult time. Um, she had gotten sick early in the summer and unfortunately she lost her battle. So I want to close on her behalf. Again, her name is Belinda Polinario. Um, her sister Anna Polinario is a good friend of mine. And again, my condolences to the family. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may? Yes, go ahead, Councilmember Hernandez. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, I'd like to close also in memory of uh, Crystal Gonzalez. Uh, she was a 30 year old, um, you know, young spirited individual um, that passed away on December the 13th. Uh, unfortunately, she did pass away uh, untimely uh, due to the coronavirus um, and the effects that uh, that it hurt that had on her. So, uh, with that, you know, we deep condolences to um, her husband um, and, of course, her her small children. Um, but it's one of those things where, unfortunately, you know, our city has also lost. I think uh, the last that I thought heard is about 113 individuals to this uh, virus. Um, so. Uh, you know, we wish all those families, um, you know, the, the support and love um, as we move into, you know, 2021. Um, and hopefully, you know, the vaccine will come upon all of us uh, very shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Hernandez. Anybody else? Mayor, I do have one more person I'd like to close on, um, on behalf of, and that would be Michael Robertson, a longtime fixture in the Los Angeles Mayor's Office and a kind man uh, who greeted, you know, people who came and went in that office for decades and he retired earlier this year. And unfortunately he passed away suddenly um, uh, a few days ago. And so I definitely wanted to close on his behalf because of all of the time that he spent in government and public safety and um, just his, uh, just as, for, you know, for, in remembrance of his smile too. So thank you. Thank you. Any other council members? No, uh, of course, uh, I send my condolences to all of those families. It's, it's unfortunate to lose, uh, you know, loved ones, especially during this time. And I, and I hope they find the energy they need to, to, uh, to find peace and, and make amends with, with the current moments. Um, at this moment, I do need to make the announcement. Uh, count, city council members are also members of the board of directors of the housing authority and finance authority, which are concurrently convening with the city council this evening. And each council member is paid an additional stipend of $30 for attending the housing authority meeting and $50 for attending the finance authority meeting. Um, and then uh, once again, before I, I make any announcements, do any council members have any announcements they, they wish to make? No, I believe no. So I will go ahead and I, and I do want to make a, uh, I do want to send a big congratulations to uh, Anthony Rosas and uh, Nick Dimitris. They just signed with the uh, They signed their letter of intent today in the morning, uh, intending to go with uh, the city of uh, Las Vegas. Uh, they are two high, uh, football players from from Sierra Vista High School, which is of course. Oh. I am very excited and, and very proud of them, and I'm sure not only is that high school proud, but is also is our city, as it is a, a big achievement to get two people to get those uh, those letters. Uh, uh, I believe uh, our parks director, uh, Manuel Carrillo, did already put their names on the marquee. So whenever they drive by, they will see that. Um, hoping city staff and can can get together and get, get some certificates and maybe we can present them to them at, the, at our next uh, city council meeting. Um, Mayor, sorry, I did have one more thing. Oh, so okay. sorry. Yes, I, want to, <laughs> I want to congratulate Mr. Santos Hernandez Jr. for his re-election for the school board. Um, he got sworn in yesterday. Also, Ms. Christina Lucero um, got re-elected. She was also sworn in. And the new, newly elected Diana DeZib was sworn in yesterday at the school board member, as, at the school board meeting. Um, so if we can maybe get some certificates uh, ready for them so we can present maybe at their next meeting. Thank you. Of course, and and that's very important. I good thing you brought that up, Mayor Pro Tem. A big congratulations to them. I know uh, Ms. Dezib is is very involved, and she's very uh, she has very strong uh, efforts towards education. So I know she will do a great job. And of course, congratulations to the to the board members who were reelected. Uh, you know, we're hoping we're going to be able to work with them and and get some stuff done here at City Hall along with the with our school district. Uh, and and moving on uh, and. Uh, Parks Director, if I make any mistake making this announcement, please correct me. Our city is uh, looking to, uh, we've, um, sorry, we've partnered with LA County and we will have walk-up testing and it will be available Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for up to 200 tests per hour, starting December 21st, going all the way till December 23rd, and then December 26th, uh, and then December 28th through De December 30th and January 2nd, 2021. 
Of course, this will be up on our website. So if you have any questions or concerns, you can look it up on our website. And of course, we are very pleased to partner with Los Angeles County to expand our free testing access here in the, in the city of Baldwin Park towards our residents and our community, which is hardest hit by COVID-19. Testing is the most effective way to track the spread of this virus. So it is important that you keep your family safe and your community safe and you get tested and make use of the resources that the city and county are providing to you. Mayor, if I may uh, make a comment. Yes, go ahead, Council Member Damien. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just actually wanted to say thank you to uh, Manny Carrillo and uh, Chief Lopez, uh, as well as the uh, Parks and Rec Department and the Police Department, along with the uh, BPUSD, the school district. Uh, we had originally, as you guys know, we had originally canceled the uh, Santa Claus program because of COVID. Uh, but we were able to come up with some some creative things and, uh, you know, we didn't get to do the 400 children, but we were able to do 100 and they did that yesterday and it was a, a success. So I just want to thank you, Manny. Thank you, Chief and your staff for doing such a great job in such short notice. Our pleasure. Thank you. The district for, uh, for working with us on this. As well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank great. You. And I, and I want to talk about that, too. I, I saw I was there for a little bit. Um, yesterday and I was also there at the food drive and I and the Department of yes. Parks and Rec has been doing a great job and it is very exciting to see many organizations within the city and the community to be working together on these efforts. I know the Ball and Park Police was there uh, yesterday with with our Parks and Rec's uh, department and I know that the police association and the police and our Parks and Rec's and members of the, of the Sierra Vista High School football team and members of the Church of the Redeemer were working together on the weekend to uh, help our 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 uh, our constituents um, in their food and their food drive. So I think that's that's very great. It's it's a great thing to see, especially during these hard times. Uh, any other any other council members uh, wishing to make a, a comment before we move on? No, and I believe at this point uh, we are going over to public communications. And I do want to remind everybody that if you require translation services from Spanish to English. Uh, to please state your request at the beginning of the comments. Uh, and I also want to remind people that if you would like to view this uh, city council meeting in Spanish, there is an alternate channel. Uh, city clerk, do we have any public com uh, public communication comments? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, we do have three and I'm going to defer to Deputy City Clerk Lourdes for this portion. Great. Thank you, City Clerk, thank you, Mayor. Um, the first caller is Cecilia Bernal. Hi, is this uh, Cecilia Bernal? Hello? Hello, Cecilia, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is uh, Mayor Estrada. We are calling you. You uh, have some public communication you would like to share with us? Yes. Great, you have uh, three minutes, so go ahead. Hello, everybody. This is Cecilia Bernal, uh, resident of Baldwin Park for 43 years. Um, I first wanted to just congratulate our new mayor. Uh, and uh, as well as the incoming council, uh, Monica Garcia, as well as um, Mr. Damien. And I just wanted to congratulate you guys and also let you know that I am uh, definitely here to support everybody, the council, the city. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mainly congratulate you on that and let you know that you know, uh, to support in any way that I can. Uh, I am with Church of the Redeemer Food Bank, um, have been the director for many years. And, you know, if anybody knows of anybody that is in need, please direct them our way and we'll be more than happy to um, meet the needs that they have. But pretty much just wanted to congratulate everybody and say I'm here to help in any way I can. And also to um, Marlene Garcia, the new city clerk. Uh, so that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Great, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Um, yes, city, congratulations again. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Chief Deputy City Clerk, uh, who is next? We have Alfredo Garcia and let me dial him now. Go ahead. Hello. 
Hi, is this uh, Alfredo Garcia? Uh, yes, it is. Hi, this is Emmanuel Estrada, Mayor of Baldwin Park. Uh, we are calling you regarding your request to speak during public comment. You have three minutes. Oh, uh, congratulations, Mayor, on uh, 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 your, uh, the day of the swearing-in for some reason. I was watching Zoom and they and they uh, called the wrong number. Uh, but I wanted to call and congratulate you on your uh, win. And also, uh, there's a couple of things. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. My name is Alfredo Garcia, and these are a few of my thoughts and uh, questions. As I look through the warrants and demands posted on the city agenda for the meeting, one can't ignore the big amount of money being spent on litigation fees. Over $50,000 to one law firm that pays this pay period alone. That is a lot of money for many people in Baldwin Park. When does, and uh, what is the city council doing to uh, reel in some of these fees that, you know, that are uh, uh, cut down on some of these fees that the city's having to pay? Uh, that's one of my questions. And another question I have is, uh, when does the uh, the current contract with the current city attorney end? If someone can answer that. And I also would like to uh, comment on the discussion about naming the uh, city council chambers after the former Mayor Lozano. I asked, what is the rush? Let's get policies and procedures in place before we make a decision this big. I can see where we can dedicate a tree, a rock, and Morgan Park or do that, but a city asset this big, uh, no thanks. Finally, the hiring of a new police chief for the city. This has been a great embarrassment for the city of Baldwin Park and city leaders. Uh, is there anything that is being done different during this current hiring process for police chief? And uh, with that, I ask, uh, I say thank you all for allowing me to speak today, tonight. Great, great. Thank you for that. Um, I, I appreciate you calling in. City so clerk. I could maybe get some uh, answers, questions, whatever. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well, we're just going to let everybody make comments first. Um, city clerk, who is next? Uh, Catherine Lozer from the Baldwin Park Library. One moment, please. Go ahead. Hello. Hi, this is uh, Mayor Estrada calling you from uh, City of Baldwin Park. We heard you had some uh, comments you wanted to make during public communication. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, Community Partners, and fellow community members. As mentioned, my name is Catherine Lozier, and I'm the Community Library Manager of the Baldwin Park Library. I wanted to take a quick moment first to welcome user Mayor Estrada, Council Member Damien, and City Clerk Garcia. And I also wanted to congratulate Council Member Garcia for another re-election. I look forward to working with each of you. Uh, and then tonight, I wanted to share information on one expanded program, and then also to introduce a new program. First, uh, the LA County Library has now expanded a laptop and hotspot service. Uh, so now customers can check out a Chromebook and wireless internet Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, in, and it comes with a carrying case and, and chargers at, at one of 76 of 79 sidewalk service libraries, including now our Baldwin Park Library. Uh, customers can check out a laptop and hotspot for three weeks, and if there isn't any customers waiting, they can renew the item. And then uh, customers to check them out will need to have a full access library card. So anybody who currently has a digital card can give us a call and we can upgrade their account to make sure that they can check out items. And then a semi-related new program that has just launched is called Work Ready. This is a program where individuals who may be um, looking to uh, start a new job or to expand on building library, uh, excuse me, uh, job skills, or looking for a new career or looking to build 
uh, job skills can now not only check out a laptop and wireless hotspot from one of 20 participating work ready libraries, unfortunately not at Baldwin Park yet, but in a six week session uh, that will take place six times through 2021, participants will be able to receive a laptop and, and work hotspots to, to work. And then they'll also be able to receive special support service items that they would be able to keep and participate in virtual programming on various topics, including uh, writing cover letters, interviewing, and uh, learning how to work at home. If you have any questions, please visit uh, lacountylibrary.org or please give us a call at the Bolden Park Library at 626-662-6947. Thank you so much and best of luck to all of the Baldwin Park community. Thank you. Thank you. And then City Clerk, I believe that was it for uh, public communication, correct? That's correct, Mayor. Great. And so, um, uh, you know, uh, just to really uh, quick for Mr. Alfredo, I, uh, I want to assure him that the council is working diligently to make sure that we are transparent and we, that we are uh, working in the best interest of everybody. Um, and then just really quick to answer his question, uh, I believe our city attorney is an at will and that means that uh, he can leave or we can, uh, you know, our relationship can end at any moment. Um, and, I, and I think that's it for public communication. So we'll, we'll close public communication uh, and then move on to consent al calendar. Is there any items uh, council members are wishing to pull? No items? Mayor, I I'm gonna, uh, I'll go ahead and pull item number uh, five. Great, okay. And is there any other, sorry, we don't, um, yeah, okay. And then any other items, any other council member would like to pull? No, okay, so I believe we can go to uh, item number four, correct? Uh, five. Oh, sorry, five. Four is my item that I want to pull. Okay, item, item number five, Council Member Damien. <laughs> you want to go ahead, go go first, Mayor, since you're pulling item four? Sure. So I believe this has to do with uh, with public works. Is that correct, uh, uh, Sam? Yes, that is correct. Sure. So do you want to just give us a little bit of the rundown of the excess land and if there's any plans on what we're going to do with that? Yeah, no, sure. I'd, I'd be happy to. So, so this is a portion of land adjacent to the freeway that was um, uh, used by uh, the city uh, as park space um, at one time, and it was it was leased. So, uh, it was mostly used as um, open space. It, it wasn't developed. Uh, in two thousand and eight, um, Caltrans took it over to use it as. Um, a temporary construction easement for their phase one widening project. And now they are, they are uh, that they're done with the project, they're offering this land to the city um, as a, you know, for purchase so that we can continue to use it as, as park space. So uh, there are several opportunities. And I think, um, you know, at one time there was a, a, a billboard and maybe uh, Ben and his team can speak to that, but there, there's opportunities there. But what we want to do is we want to be able to apply for grant fundings to green the, and make it a park, uh, parquet. Great, and then Ms. May, and then just, uh, I know that, that that area is fenced off, correct? But right next to it, there's a couple of extra pieces of, of kind of dirty, not dirty, but dirt or green space, correct? Correct. So the, the, the area that's fenced off is not part of the purchase. It's those areas that are not fenced up that are, you know, that, that you're talking about. Those are the areas uh, that we're going to be uh, purchasing. That's, that's what we call Rosehead Park. The other area where it's fenced off, um, Caltrans has reached out to, to me and I'm still looking over the documents, but they want to relinquish that property over to the city, essentially just give it uh, over to us. Um, it does contain uh, some, uh, uh, catch, uh, sorry, detention basin. So there's drainage that goes into it. So it's, there's not much use for us. So we're evaluating and I'm gonna um, go through all of the documents and make a recommendation. Great, okay. Um, okay, so at this at this moment, I, I believe I can make a motion to pass item number four. 
Is there a second? Second. Great, thank you. Uh, any objections? Great, and then I believe uh, that makes it so that it's a 5-0 vote. Um, and now we can move on to consent. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Item number five, correct, uh, Council Member Damien? That is correct, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, so I, I pulled this item. I had originally spoke with Sam regarding a couple of the items that were uh, on the agenda for this meeting. And I just pulled this item just so that we can kind of give clarification to the, to the uh, general public and to our residents. You know, every time you hear contracting out, it scares a lot of employees, right? And that's not something that I'm for, and I want to, you know, make that for the record. But sometimes you also have to look at <clears throat> and make sure that the numbers do make sense. In this case, there is an actual savings, annual savings of about $88,000 a year. Um, so what we're going to do is basically contract out uh, to have a contract no more than $100,000 annually, but they are going to take care of all of the center medians from the 605 to uh, going to Padilla, the West Covina, uh, Baldwin Park Boulevard, so forth and so on, the slopes over by the uh, Walmart. So there's a lot of, of territory that they're going to have to do that if we were to put Basically, what they're going to provide is a two-man team, a foreman and a labor, and once a month, an irrigation uh, professional. If we were to do that with one of our senior employees and a regular employee, uh, we would be paid more in salary annually. And with upcoming projects that we, are, that we have in the pipeline and that Sam's working on currently with Public Works, uh, it's not going to give us the ability with the manpower that we currently have to sustain the maintenance of all of that. So, you know, I looked at all of that. And I came to the agreement that yes, it does make sense in this case to contract this portion out. Um, so with that, I do want to make a motion to approve item number five. Hold on, before you, I believe before you make that motion, can I make a comment? Yeah, sure, definitely. So I I, I understand the need to uh, to get a contractor, and I, and this is a request for uh, this is a, a a request for proposal, or what is this, uh, Sam? Yeah, no, hi. so the uh, the RFP uh, was already out. This is an award of contract. So we've already gone through the proposal and we got uh, two responses. We evaluated um, the, the contractors and we are making a recommendation tonight for uh, award of contract. Great, because I see this as, you know, uh, if we if we look more into it, I, I know we're spending a potential of up to uh, 90, to close to 100,000, right? So if we could find a, and I think we have the mobility and I'm not sure, but uh, I think we have Robert city attorney can correct me if I'm wrong. We, we have a better, we have the ability to pick and choose in, a little bit freely. So I would, I would want to see if we could consider a more local company so that we're actually putting a potential of a hundred thousand dollars into our local economy. Right. I know currently we're at double digits on employment. So I think it, it, it could have a better effect, but I don't know if anybody else agrees with that. So, so Mayor, just so I can get clarification, are you requesting for us to go back to RFP or? I would, I would like to see uh, city really engage in with the, with the local business owners and try to find a more local uh, landscaper to take care of the, 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 the city avenues, yes. I don't know how that would work. Uh, Sam, I know you guys went out to RFP. Can you kind of uh, explain how that would work? Um, so, sure. So we, we did go to an RFP. We uh, put out the call. Uh, like I said, we only got two two responses. Um, I'm looking into right now where uh, Mariposa is located, but they, they handle a lot of the uh, maintenance around here. They, they also do maintenance for uh, the city of Irwindale. Um, and to my recollection, I don't think there is a, um, a, a company or a um, uh, contractor in the city that would be able to uh, do these kind of services. Um, uh, when we put out the call, if there had been any, uh, that would have been the time for them to uh, submit a proposal. So I, 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 I think that uh, because Mariposa, you know, when we did the evaluation, uh, they, they do a lot of cities and we were um, satisfied with um, the services that they're going to be providing for this. So, uh, you know, we, we uh, our recommendation is to award the contract and, and move forward with the, the contract. Gotcha. Okay, that's fine. Just a thought, I think, for, for future proposals and try to get, you know. I, I think they're located in Irwindale. Yeah, they're, they're located in Irwindale. And, and Mariposa, I, you know, is, is a good company. I just figured if this is a chance to, you know, put money into the local economy, then why not? 
but uh, by all I, means, I, I just confirmed as well that they are in our window. So, yeah. By, so by all means, uh, Council Member Damien, if you'd like to make your motion, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just one more question that I forgot to ask. I'm sorry about that. Sam, how long is the contract for? Do we have a term? Uh, how yes. Yes, so we are proposing a, a three-year uh, contract um, with the option to extend it uh, if mutual uh, agreement by the parties. Got it. Okay, three years spare. I'll move. I'll make a move. Mr. Council Member. Sure. Go ahead. Just also for clarification, they also provide service for the Valley County Water District too. Got it. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions before uh, we make a motion? And Sam, I just wanted to comment. I think you can verify that um, typically all these type of contracts have a 30 day out if for any reason we're, you know, we're not happy with the, um, uh, the service or we decide to go a different route. Um, we can also end that. Is that correct here? That's absolutely correct. Um, uh, the city reserves the right to terminate the contract with or without cause with a 30 day notice. So I have a question in regards to that, Sam. Um, and this is, a, I think, a broader conversation. Um, I understand the language for why it's for why it might be there, where we give 30 day notice for a company to, you know, remove uh, essentially without cause. Um, my concern is, as a biz, as a as a city, um, it's bad practice for us to be awarding contracts, and you know, 30 days from now or 60 days from now, uh, we we take that contract away from them uh, because it's not for you know, underperforming or not, you know, cutting the grass uh, to our expectations and so forth. So um, I'd like to add, uh, you know, if we can do this in the contract now, um, that we add language that reads and perhaps our city attorney could help us with this, where, you know, we can remove the contract um, if it's for uh, lack of, uh, you know, professional service to the, to the, you know, the degree that we are asking for them to be performing. Because again, uh, and this is for any other contracts that we're seeing, right? Because again, if we want to bring in uh, various contractors, regardless of what type of services that they have, um, and they're investing money into either new equipment because they are now getting this contract on behalf of the city, that it only makes sense that they have some level of comfort um, making sure that their contract will not be removed um, unless it's for, you know, underperformance or not meeting the, the, uh, the items in which we've set out for them to be doing under this contract. Um, uh, yeah, I'll discuss it with our city attorney and I'm sure that we can add um, to, to that clause. Typically, uh, we keep that in place uh, just to kind of uh, facilitate uh, should, should any uh, circumstance, not just underperforming, uh, underperforming is one of them, but we typically wouldn't do it just, you know, for the sake of doing it. We, we would uh, have to establish and document the underperformance and um, you know, provide that. Uh, but, you know, if something should happen and city lose fundings and cannot afford that contract anymore, then that, that would be, uh, you know, one of the reasons. So it's kind of like a generalistic um, clause, but we can, we can modify it and I, I can work with the city attorney on it. So can we, can we, I'm sorry. So as you said, Sam, if, you know, we lose funding, let that be one of the stipulations that we have in there um, that, that speaks directly to that. But just, just sending 30 day notice to a company um, for no cause of action uh, does not seem uh, business friendly from a city's perspective. So if we can add that language into this contract um, and future contracts, uh, you know, that would be great. Absolutely. So, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, city attorney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you are going to add that language to this contract, then I would recommend continuing this item and bringing it back because if you improve this contract as it is, it's not going to have that language in there. So um, if you approve it tonight as it is, it will not have that language in there. Mr. Mr. Damien, um, would you be comfortable with making that modification so we can bring it back uh, with that language? So let me ask, uh, do they currently have an issue with the way the contract is written now, Sam? N not to my knowledge. Um, I mean, because I, I mean, I agree with Councilmember Hernandez. It's not good practice to just go ahead and give someone a contract and then take it out 30 days later. I totally agree with that. But 
I think that if the company doesn't have a current issue with that and they're accepting the contract as it's written, um, I mean, I, of course, I don't think that any of us on the council are going to be, hey, you know what, we changed our mind. Let's go ahead and take this contract away in 30 days. But at least this way, it gives us the ability to go ahead and move forward with the contract. What do you guys? Mr. Mr. Mayor Damien, if I may respond to that. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, no, those are very good, ex very good points, uh, Council Member Damien. But I think it's not something that they may be asking. It's something that, as a council, we should ask and we should place in their contract so we can prevent that from happening from you know uh, in the future. And so they have a better understanding of what we're doing. So that's why I say is if we agree to it and there's no rush to do this contract, we can bring this back with that language and we can move it through through consent um, to show you know once again our support of supporting uh, our businesses and in, in our in our city sam is there is there a time crunch on this uh by, yeah. by when do you need uh yeah. this film? no absolutely so there is there is no rush we can definitely um uh, bring you know make the modifications to the contract and bring it back at the next meeting that is no problem so what? i think Oh, sorry. I think the best, maybe we can bring it back and then maybe that way we can address my concerns. We can address uh, council member Hernandez concerns and, and, you know, a little bit, there's a little bit more discussion regarding this item. I think that I'm okay with bringing it back. I have no problem with that um, because I think it does deserve further discussion only because I think that if we leave the contract the way it is, it will give us more protection as a city. Um, but I, I agree. I think that we could have more discussion on this, maybe move it into a discussion item and we can sit down and discuss it as a council, but um, yeah, let's move it forward. I'm, that's my only concern. I think it gives us more protection as a city, um, but let's go ahead and move this forward and have more discussion on it. You would need a motion, Mr. Mayor, make, to continue this item. Can okay. I make the motion, Mr. Mayor? Uh, whoever wants to make the motion. Certainly, um, I'd like to make a motion in which we bring this back uh, with language that stipulates uh, you know, um, as we stated that, you know, we won't be able to add the 30 day clause without cause uh, or lack of performance uh, or payment or, you know, items in which uh, staff could also add in there, uh, such as if funding is removed, um, that would be also something in which that would trigger uh, the termination, can trigger a termination with 30 day uh, notice. Um, uh, that is my motion. Uh, is there any seconds? No seconds. Okay, I'd like to make a motion if that's okay with everybody. I just let's bring it back to the table. Let's consider, uh, you know, the impact of if, whether this is an opportunity to support uh, local businesses and, of course, the the contract uh, the contract uh, language. Since we're already bringing it back, we can. I, I don't see why we can't uh, consider both. Uh, both the factors. Second. So motion. Thank you. Uh, is there any objection? All right. So I believe that is five zero. Robert, correct me if I'm wrong. We don't need a roll call, right? Oh, uh, we do not, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Thank Mayor, you. So just, yeah. for, so just for clarification, we are bringing this item back for further discussion. Correct. Correct. On the on the on the contract uh, language, and of course, the ability to maybe find something that can impact our, our economy in a in a positive way. Great. So. Uh, I believe the, that motion passes and this item will be moved over and we will look for further discussion on it. Uh, I believe there is no other items to pull from the consent calendar. Is that correct? Uh, if any council members have any, you can also let me know. If not, I make a motion to pass consent calendars, all items except four and five. Um, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any objections? No. So that is five zero, and that passes. Thank you. All right. I, I, sorry to try a quick question. Are, are you not approving four and five, or? Um... So I believe uh, four we voted on, and we and that and that passed. Five we we voted to pass that over for further discussion, and then the re so those weren't voted in the consent uh, consent calendar because we pulled them. Thank you, Mayor. All right, and then. I believe at this point we can move on to a city council acting as successor agency of the Dissolved Community Development Commission. And so, uh, Mr. Mayor, just for the record, uh, that motion we just passed was to approve consent calendar items one, two, three, and six. Correct? Yes, I believe so, uh, because we pulled four and five, so we voted on those independently. Correct? Thank you. 
All right. And so at this point, we are uh, looking at the consent calendar for the Community Development Commission. Um, I believe there are some items. Uh, is, is, is there any items the council members would like to discuss or pull from the consent calendar? If no, I uh, make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Is there any objections? No, so I believe that is 5-0 and that consent calendar is passed. Uh, we now move to reports of officers. Um, so at this one, I think this one's gonna be a little bit lengthy. So we are talking about uh, nominations. So is there any, is there any uh, council members interested in serving in any agencies? So which one? Mayor. Uh, yeah, who was that? Uh, council member Garcia, I mean, uh, City Clerk Garcia? This is City Clerk Garcia, yes. Uh, the There are certain positions here that require the mayor to serve. So I'm not sure if the council had an opportunity to review each of those. Uh, did you want to go one by one or? Did yeah, you why just... don't we go one by one? That way we just, okay. you know, there's no confusion. I think that's a good idea, City Clerk. And I believe uh, the first one, uh, where is it at? That is the San Gabriel Valley Water Association. It's a quarterly yeah. luncheon held in various locations. Correct, and then that is uh, for the mayor to serve, is it? That one, no, actually that one um, can be any, you want a representative and an alternate. You are correct. So I believe this was, uh, this was uh, the appointed person was the former mayor. Um, is there any council members interested in this or being an alternate? Mr. Mayor, I'm open to this if others have ideas also. Sure, and you'd like to be the, rep the, the representative, correct? That's fine. I can do this. And then is anybody uh, looking to be the alternate for this? No, if not, I can, I can be uh, Council Member Hernandez alternate if that's okay. Perfect. Great. And then I believe the next one is uh, the one where the mayor has to be. And then correct me if I'm wrong, City Clerk. You're better at you are correct. Them. So I believe at this one, I will be the representative and I will need an alternative. And I believe uh, council member Garcia is currently the alternate on that one. So I don't know if she would uh, like to hold on to that or if there's another council member that might like to discuss taking over that alternate position. I'm fine holding on to it if nobody else is interested. Great. And is there any uh, discussion from any council members regarding that alternate position? If not, we can move on to the next one. Next one is the League of California Cities, Los Angeles County Division. They meet on the first Thursday at 6 p.m., various locations, and it's open to any two who would like to serve. Great, and uh, I believe, uh, is there, I believe uh, Mayor Pro Tem Alejandro Avila currently has that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, are you okay keeping that, or is there any other council members interested in that? I can stay there, Mayor. Great. Uh, and then alternate is Councilmember Hernandez. Councilmember, are you okay staying alternate or would you? No, I'm happy to offer that to somebody else if they like. Sure. Is there anybody interested in that position? Uh, I'll do it, uh, Mayor. Is that Councilmember Damien? Yes. Great. Thank you. The next one is Civil Defense Area D general membership meeting. They meet on the third Thursday at 8.30 a.m. at the Area D office. Uh, there is an EPA representative and alternate. The representative seems to be the chief of police currently, and the alternate was former Mayor Manuel Lozano. Okay, so, uh, and I believe, so Chief Lopez takes care of that, and Chief, you're okay with continuing that? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, and I believe the mayor was the alternate on this one. Uh, if there's no interest, then I can, I can uh, be the alternate. Is there any interest in this from any other council members? I believe not, so I will uh, list Perfect. myself as the alternate. Uh, the next one is Independent Cities Association. And mm -hmm. I believe uh, Council Member Hernandez has this one. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, are you okay with keeping this or would you like to discuss? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it, unless there's interest from somebody else. Um, no. Okay, and then uh, Mayor Pro Tem Avila, I believe you are the alternate. Are you okay with continuing being the alternate? I will bypass it, Mayor. What was that? We'll pass on that one, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, is there any other council members that might be interested in that? Yeah, I can be the alternate, uh, Mayor. 
Great. Let me write that down. And then I believe, I believe the next one is um, the association, Independent Cities Association Lease Finance Authority. And that is currently vacant. Um, so I can, I'll take that one, Mayor. Okay. And then I believe the chief is the alternate. Chief, are you okay with that? I'm sorry, sir. What is the uh, position? The Independent Cities Association uh, Lease Finance Authority, you are currently listed as the alternate. Sure, I'm not uh, too up on, on that, but yes, sir, I'll, I'll be the alternate. Great, great. There's always room to learn, right? <laughs> yes, sir, absolutely. Good, good. Um, and I believe Los Angeles County City Selection, and we are at, um, and I believe this is a appointment, uh, the mayor is supposed to be the representative for uh, this one, which is Los Angeles County City Selection Committee. So I will take that. And um, Council Member Garcia, I believe you are listed as alternate. Are you okay with that? Sure. Great. And so now we are at uh, the Southern California Association of Governments, the annual conference in the month of May. Um, Council Member Garcia, are you okay with continuing being the representative? Yes. And then council member Hernandez, did you want to continue? Did you want to continue being the alternate? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Great. Um, and now we are at the foothill transit zone. Uh, and I believe it's currently vacant for the representatives. Um, is there anybody interested in that? They meet at what time? Uh, 7, 9 a.m. I can take, I can do that one. 7.45 a.m. Yes. All right, and then uh, Council Member Hernandez, you are listed as the alternate. Are you okay with that? I'm happy to give that up to somebody else. Unless nobody else wants it, I'll do it again. Uh, I don't mind taking it. It's yours. Great. So, uh, Damien will be our rep Council Member Damien will be our representative, and I will be the alternate there. Um, I believe we are at the California Contract Cities Association, um, and this is the third Wednesday at six p.m. and the appointee is, uh, I believe, Councilmember Garcia. Are you okay with that, Councilmember Garcia? Yes. Great. And I believe the alternate was former mayor. Uh, is any council member interested in this? If not, I will take it. Okay. And then I believe we are at uh, the governing board of the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control. Um, And this is uh, the former. This is a uh, uh, former mayor was appointed to this one. Uh, I'll so, may mayor, ex yeah, excuse me. So these um, are appointed and don't necessarily have to be council members. Um, so as long as um, the uh, mayor does not resign, um, he cannot be removed from that section. So um, until the end of his term, which is noted here on 12 31, uh, 2021, same as when. Council member Cruz Baca was no longer on the council. She still served out the rest of her term. Gotcha. Okay, so we'll leave that one alone. Yes. Uh, the last Thank one you. is the San Gabriel Valley Council of Governments. Uh, and I believe our appointee was a uh, former council member Ayala. I do, I will not, uh, if anybody's not interested in this, I am interested in it, just pointing it out there. If, uh, but if anybody else is interested in it, uh, you can let me know. I'm, I'm interested in it, Mayor, but I know you're as well, so... Uh, Monica, are you still uh, willing to stay on as an alternate? I'll, you know, if, if that's something that you would like, Danny, then you can take the alternate position if you, if that's what you would like. And then, you know, if, however you guys want to work it out, but yeah, I'll relinquish that. Okay. Uh, do you want to do that, Manny? You want to take the primary? I'll take the uh, alternate and we can kind of switch off here and there. Yeah. I think that sounds like a plan. So if everybody's okay with that, that's what we will do. Awesome. Thank you, Monica. And I believe that is all. And so I, I believe we're all in consensus on that. Is there a, uh, uh, let's see, where are we at? So we I would need somebody, will, somebody will stop. We need a motion there, Mayor, to approve and adopt resolution number 2020-065. Gotcha. So at this point, I will make a motion to adopt that resolution uh, in the order that we've uh, we've all agreed to. Is there a second? Second. 
Any objections? No, and so that passes 5-0. And I believe at this point we are at the city council uh, staff request and communication. Uh, so I have the first request on here and uh, just to read it so everybody's aware of what I'm talking about. Mayor Estrada requests city council discussion and selection of two subcommittee members to meet with the Ballin Park Unified School District members in regards to city and district relations and possible joint use projects. So I, I think this is a very important one, uh, especially now. I, I think it's very important that there's communication between the district and the city to make sure that everybody uh, you know, is, is, is working together, especially during these times. And, and of course, during the good times, we have possibilities of joint use projects and, and working together to increase green space and, and activities for, for the youth and, and put our resources together. So if there's, if there's any comments on this, any discussion, I think this is a great idea, Mayor. Um, we do need to strengthen that relationship with our school district. Um, and I think that we, you know, we have the opportunity to do that this year um, and looking forward to uh, many joint projects with them. So I think this is a really great idea. Great. And so we would have to select uh, two subcommittee members from what I understand. Um, and, I, and so I don't know if anybody else is interested. I would be interested, Mayor. Great. Um, is everybody okay with Alejandra being one? Uh, sorry, Mayor Pro Tem Avila being one of the, the two uh, subcommittee members? I see no objections. Um, I, I too would like to be a part of this. I think it's a, it's a great thing. I, you know, as, as many of you know, I, I, I really, uh, I think this is a chance to talk about green spaces, which I'm all for, but I don't know if any other council members have an interest in this. Um, I do mayor, I mean, if you want it, you know, you can, you can have it. Um, because I do believe that, you know, I, I support you hundred percent. I, you know, I want to work with the school district as well, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we have to be on the subcommittee. So if you want to take it with the uh, vice mayor pro tem, um, sorry, vice mayor pro tem with vice mayor Avila, go ahead. You can take it with her. Shannon, is there a possibility to do like a rotating thing on this or is this the two would have to be it? Um, you could appoint an alternate, but only two could meet at a time. Um, so I would either recommend an alternate in case one of you couldn't meet, or maybe, um, you know, regroup after three months and see if you want to rotate. Um, but typically what you would do is um, meet with um, as a subcommittee, and then you would come back and uh, report to the council as a whole. So they would have input and uh, get direction and then go back and meet um, with the committee again. So it's your pleasure. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Go ahead, take really it. quick, Mayor, I have a question um, yes. for the attorney. Since okay, I work for the school district, would it be a conflict of interest for me to be on that? I was just thinking of that. Uh, I was thinking of it as you spoke, but I didn't, uh, I didn't know for sure. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to say that on its surface, uh, Vice Mayor, because you do work for the uh, school district, uh, at the very least, there's an appearance of a conflict, even if there isn't an actual conflict. So um, in, if you wish to avoid that appearance, I would uh, suggest that you um, not be on that subcommittee. Mr. Damien, you can go ahead and take my spot. I, I just, um, I was thinking of that and I don't want to uh, appear that there may be a conflict of interest because I do work for them. Oh, you're on mute, Council Member Damien. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take it with you, Mayor. Great. So it sounds like uh, Council Member Damien and I will be the, the two members of that subcommittee. And so can we just get a motion uh, to be clear with staff on, on what we're requesting from them? And so I will make the motion. Can I get a second? Second. Great. Uh, is there any objections? No. So I believe we are in consensus, and that sends a clear message to staff on what we would like to direct them on. And I believe uh, Mayor Pro Tem Alejandra Avila had the next uh, comment. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so I requested uh, to, to give staff direction to place uh, the recent council chambers facility naming on hold and to turn to the city council with a study session to discuss and adopt a formal policy on naming any future city facilities. And by all means, I do not mean that Former Mayor Lozano is not deserving. However, at this time, we don't have any type of policy in place 
that helps us to decide on how to name any type of building after somebody. So just to be transparent, um, I would like to uh, create a policy that, that clearly uh, tells us how it is that we choose to name a facility after somebody. Um, this was put on the agenda two weeks ago. Um, there was no prior discussion to that whatsoever. So what I'm asking is that the council consider adopting a policy and then consider naming the building after former Mayor Lozano once we adopt the policy deciding how we can do that. Um, these types of things I don't think should be done in a random way whenever somebody gets a feeling that we should name a building after somebody. So if we follow a policy, we will be transparent. Um, the public, when they named uh, the football field after Mr. Jack White, they put a whole, they did, they, they had a policy in place and they, they, uh, they had opinions from different people. And so it, it was a, it was a well, it was a good process. They had several meetings to decide who, who could they name that football field after. And finally they came to a consensus and that's how they named uh, Mr. White, um, the field after Mr. White. So I just think it's fair to for everybody, including the former mayor. So let's look at what other cities are doing uh, to set something in place that is fair, like I said, and we can reconsider this. I'm sure you all agree, uh, like I said, we wanna be fair, we wanna be transparent. And this being the case, I wanna go ahead and make the motion to hold off on this, on naming the building and draft a clear policy on who is deserving of such an honor and once that policy is drafted, we can reconsider the naming of, of uh, former Mayor Lozano of any other building in, in the city of Baldwin Park. So that is my motion. I'll second it. For, for clarification, um, because we already took the action, City Attorney Robert Tafoya. Yes, ma'am. Um, just for clarification, does, is, does there have to be an action to reverse the naming of the building? Um, and then an action to establish a policy because we've already taken the action. So in essence, you know, you're asking to reverse that action. Um, well, in the sense that yes, there would have to be something on the agenda uh, after a policy is adopted in order to um, uh, make another decision. The council can make another decision at any time. So in other words, you know, they could decide at any time that they wanted to uh, change the name of the Terry Muse Center if they wanted to. So there doesn't necessarily have to be a action to reverse it, but the council can take any action at any time it wants to change the name or to not put the name or whatever their decision may be. Um, but um, uh, definitely uh, that should probably occur after um, the policy that uh, um, Vice Mayor Avila is talking about. Robert, and, and I, I think her direction is to put it on hold. And so, uh, you know, that can be done through direction. And then if they wanted to change that, then you would have to put that on the agenda and, and the council would have to make another decision about that. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Mayor. I didn't, I didn't ask for the floor, so um, I just jumped right in. No uh, worries. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, well, did we take the act? We took the action at the last council meeting on December 2nd, correct? That is correct. Okay. So now what I'm hearing is that council member Alejandra Avila would like to reverse that action or Am I hearing that she would like to place the, uh, a pol you know, policy item on the agenda to discuss? Uh, like it's not one in the same, in other words. So can you provide clarification? So if I may, um, so what I ask is uh, for, I want that to make a motion to put it on hold on the naming of the building so that we can draft, draft a policy that is clear on who is deserving. 
And then once that policy is drafted, we can revisit to reconsider the naming of a building. Okay, so you're asking that we put the naming on hold. However, on December 2nd, we approved the name is my, is my point. So we cannot hold, we would have, that would have been an action to be taken on December 2nd, but we took action to approve the naming. And so at this point, there, it has to be very clear what we're doing next um, or what you're proposing to do. And what I'm hearing the city attorney say is we keep it, we keep, we, uh, you know, keep the action from December 2nd and then we review a policy. Um, and what I'm hearing you say, Alejandra, is you're saying that we hold on naming the building, but that has already happened on December 2nd. So I think there needs to be some clarity here. Okay, so uh, attorney to point yes. So then if it makes it more clear, I'd like to reverse that, come up with the policy on how it is that we name a building after somebody. Then if we wanna consider uh, putting it back on the agenda to see uh, once we have that policy to see if somebody wants to name a building after a certain person, then we can make that decision then and put it back on the agenda. Is that possible, attorney? Uh, yes, that's possible. Um, you, you can do it either way. So for example, if you do a motion to put it on hold and then you do a policy and it turns out that the policy and, and you still want to name it, uh, the, the, keep it on uh, as the mayor, uh, Lozano, Mayor Manuel Lozano, then you don't even have to come back to do anything other than, you know, you, you take that, you make a motion to move forward with it, um, it, it because you're doing it on hold now. Or you can make a motion to reverse it. And then, uh, of course, that would reverse it. You can change the council can change their mind at any time they want. And then, uh, and then you do the policy and then you'd have to bring it back again. So you can do it either way. Okay, then I'll make a motion to reverse it. And then let's come up with the policy. Let's draft a policy in case this comes up of anybody wanting to name a building after somebody. We can look at what buildings we have available in our city that would be appropriate uh, of, to name somebody after them. So Mr. I'll go mayor. ahead and make that motion, Mayor, to reverse that policy. That well, what we voted on last week to name yeah, the on. building after Lozano. Yeah, so and hold on. I'll come up with the policy, please. Mr. Mayor. So, yes, hold on. So hold on. Uh, Robert, before, can we clarify that that was actually passed? I believe a lot of us were under the impression that a lot of these items were moved over. Um, I, I believe that was passed, Mr. Mayor. I believe it was. I believe it was passed on consent is what it was. That's that's correct. That, I but I can reverse it. So I would like to reverse it then and create a policy and then um, we can move forward from there. Mr. Mayor, if I may, just for yes, clarification. Okay. Um, and, and thank you, Council Member Avila for bringing this up. Um, but just, you know, I, I'm still a bit confused. Uh, Robert, again, this item passed, you know, on December the 2nd, if I remember correctly, um, in consent with 5-0. Um, and in order for us to take action uh, we would have to put on the agenda as a, as an action item, not necessarily as a request uh, item, for us to actually change or revert that policy decision that the council did at that period of time. Is that not correct? That is my understanding of what uh, Council Member Avila is asking, to put that on. Uh, that does have to be an agenda item to reverse it. So right. we so we couldn't do that today. We would have to put that on at a, at another time for that for those action steps to occur. Is it correct? Yeah, you you would have to have it on an agenda item. That the yes, there has to be an agenda item, and, okay. and that's why that's why you have the report of officers because they're asking you know to put something on or to do something at a later date. No, I appreciate that. I just wanted the clarification for the, the, the technicality on that. So thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so uh, so I, I believe uh, Mayor Pro Tem can still make a motion, correct? So what is the motion that you can make? Okay, yeah. Mayor, so my motion would be to reverse 
what we voted on last week and the item was to name the, the council chambers after Mayor Lozano. Again, I wanna clarify, I feel, I don't feel that he's not deserving. I just wanna make sure that we have a policy in place. So in the future, whenever we want to name anything in the city after somebody, there's a policy in place and it's not questionable. Um, as you remember, there were people at the last meeting questioning why um, the building was being named. So that way we have answers for them as well. We'll have a policy well in place. So my motion again is to reverse that, put it back on the well, agenda and come up with a policy on how to do that. Yeah, So, but the motion is to put it on the agenda to reverse it, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Great, is there a second? I I'd like to make a substitute motion to that. And I think it, I, I, I understand the concerns that the vice mayor is mentioning. And I know that you mentioned of the naming of the service to high school stadium after Jack White. And I'm sure that some people, you know, questioned whether that was appropriate, but given the legacy, you know, I, I think that the policy that was adopted by the school board um, justified that naming and that action. So my substitute motion would be, would, would we like to, as the city attorney mentioned, hold on the action that was taken on December 2nd and then look at a policy, you know, develop a policy and, um, and then have a, a, you know, a fuller discussion around, around the item. That would be my substitute motion. Okay, is there a second for Councilmember Garcia's motion? Second. Objections. Objection. Great. And I believe we go to a roll call. City Clerk, roll call, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, just, council. Sorry, just to clarify, uh, yes is in favor of uh, Councilmember Garcia's uh, motion, correct? Well, that is correct. Okay, go ahead, Council. Uh, go ahead, City Clerk. Yes, Councilmember Garcia. Yes. Councilmember Hernandez. Yes. Council member Dan Daniel Damien. I, I'm sorry, I need to get clarification. What was council member Garcia's uh, motion? So I believe uh, Mayor Pro Tem's motion was to reverse it completely. Uh, my, uh, council member Garcia's motion is to just put it on hold. Is to hold, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep the action as it was on December 2nd and then to develop a policy so that we can have a more comprehensive conversation around this. Got it. Uh, no. Mayor Mayor Estrada. No. And uh, Mayor Portim Avila. No. Okay. So I believe at this point we can go back to Council Members uh, Avila uh, Mayor Portim's Avila's original motion. And is there an objection to that? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, Mr. Mayor, uh, I don't believe we have a second yet. For, uh, you are vice. correct. Uh, is there a second? I will second. Okay. And then is there an objection? Yes. Great. Yes. Uh, City Clerk, roll call, please. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Protema Alejandra Avila. Yes. Uh, Council Member Damien. Yes. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, I'm sorry, Council Member Paul Hernandez. No. Council Member Monica Garcia? No. And Mayor Emanuel Estrada? Yes. And so I believe at this moment, we've, uh, moment we've made a, a motion has passed to bring this back on the agenda and vote on reversing the action, correct? Robert? And to, and to draft a policy. And to draft a policy, that is correct. Great. Uh, is there any other comments regarding this or can we move on to the next one? If not, at this point, I will give the floor over to Council Member Damien, and he can uh, bring up his topic. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so mine's a request, uh, City Council discussion and direction to staff to prepare and send an RFP for on-call engineering and building services to ensure the city is receiving the best services at competitive cost. Um, so I had a couple of discussions after a briefing with uh, Sam from our Public Works Department, and Right now, honestly, I believe that we healthy competition is always good. 
And so if we can just bring in an RFP just so that we can bring in more on-call engineering services, this is what we have uh, more options to look for. Not that there's anything wrong with the current engineering company that we have, but just so that we can have a little bit more competition in there and we have more competitive pricing, as well as sometimes there's work that's out of their scope. So if we have, for example, we have one project, if let's just say we have three on-call engineering services companies, we can basically get that project and take it to all three companies and say, here's the project, give us your proposal versus just saying, hey, company, here's our project, give us your quote. And we're only stuck to one quote instead of three. And then that way we can work on more competitive pricing. Um, so that's the reason why I brought this item in, see if we can get RFP for engineering, engineering on-call services. Okay, is there a, uh, any comments from council members or maybe a city staff that relates to this issue? Yeah, just for clarification, once again, uh, Councilor Damien, um, are you asking that we have additional contractors while still maintaining this contractor on our list of uh, available contractors that Public Works can use? Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, we still want to keep this contractor there. We're not removing any contracts. We just want to bring in an RFP uh, so that we have more uh, on-call services with different engineering firms. Uh, because, like, for example, um, the quiet zone is not something that the current engineering servicing company that we have can handle. Um, so that would be a specialty item. But if we have more of a three engineering services, we can just bring them companies in here and we can give them, uh, you know, the project that we have and they can all three give us the bid versus just getting bid from one company. Um, Sam, can you can you uh, chime in here for a little bit and just kind of explain to, uh, to us the background of why it's convenient to have the uh, three on-call engineering firms? Um, sure. So um, having a, a bench of uh, con consultants, uh, designers, um, or, or contractors uh, provides flexibility in terms of being responsive to, to new projects. So um, for example, uh, specialized projects. Um, having a bench in place will allow us to bypass the RFP process, which is about a four to six month uh, uh, process that adds to the length of a project. Um, and, you know, just having a, um, a, a, a bench available to get quotes from uh, will just provide, you know, just some flexibility for us. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Oh, thank you, appreciate that. Um, so my understanding is this contractor is actually doing the quiet zone for Covina right now. Um, so I'm a bit confused as to uh, as to you know the statements of saying that this contractor is not able to do that type of work. Um, has there been other what you know from staff's point? What other projects have we've uh, not done with this current contractor because of you know, they haven't had the qualifications to do so, if any. Yeah, so um, not necessarily uh, saying that they don't have the qualifications to do it, um, but our contract does allow us to uh, use other uh, consultants for similar work. So that's, that's what we, to the extent of it. Um, the working relationship we have with our current contractor has been good. They've, they've met our expectations. Um, we don't have, um, you know, any, any complaints or anything like that. So uh, an example of, of contracts that, that we've done elsewhere, um, gone outside, is we RFP'd for our payment management uh, services. That is a survey uh, citywide. Um, uh, uh, we, we did an RFP and our consultant um, did respond to that because they are qualified to do that service, uh, but we went with a different company. Uh, the uh, MetroLink uh, uh, project, that is a very specialized um, uh, project. So what we did instead was we, we partnered with MetroLink on it. So uh, they, have a, they, they have a bench of, of consultants um, that worked directly with them. So what they did is they took our project and uh, gave it to their bench and got a quote uh, from them. And um, now they now they have a consultant on there and we're partnering directly with Metrolink. So those are just some examples. 
And Mayor, if I may, uh, Councilmember Hernandez, and it's honestly, there's nothing that there's nothing wrong with the current contractor that we have. Um, I, you know, Sam, like Sam said, I don't think there's been many complaints about the work and quality work that they've done. Uh, but to me, it's just, it, it's, it makes sense business wise to have more uh, competition, right? You want to have a healthy competition because if not, we're only going to be beholden to this one company. If we have three, two or three companies to choose from and we have different projects, we're able to take these projects to all three and say, here's our project, give us your quote or your proposal. And then obviously we can go with the best one, but it's not that there's anything wrong with the current company that we're working with. It's just that it's, it makes more business sense to bring in an extra or two more to choose from. That's fine. I mean, I'm okay with, you know, adding others with specialties. Uh, that would be fine. Um, you know, I have no problem with that, uh, Council Member Damien. My only concern is, you know, when we put the RFP out or when the city did, because, you know, none of us were here uh, on this one <laughs> for the most part, uh, you know, the RFP was for, you know, various uh, vendors, right? And so now, you know, in their current contract, we're, we're adding additional vendors. So that's just something that, you know, again, trying to be business friendly and I certainly understand your, your position, but trying to be business friendly, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not taking away from, you know, one vendor or others, but, um, but you know, and perhaps maybe this is something that uh, Sam or um, our attorney could talk to us about, you know, in regards to the base selection, um, the quality base selection that's required by the law. Uh, if you can speak to that, please. Robert, you want to respond or do you want me to? Yes. Speak? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was on, I think I was on mute. So yes, there is no requirement to go out to RFP um, for professional services. Um, usually the requirement to go out to RFP is for public works projects, something that you put a shovel in the ground. So there's no legal requirement to do so but we certainly have gone out to RFP on, you know, other issues that we're not legally required to do so, but uh, there is no legal requirement in that regard. Uh, sorry, Robert, I, I was referring to the uh, quality based selection, the state law. Perhaps Sam could speak to that. Yeah, I think. We, sure. Yeah, sure. So uh, I think the law that you're referring to is, um, uh, typically referred as the mini Brooks uh, uh, law, and that is the um, uh, qualification based selection system. Uh, and it's a process uh, that allows us to go out without a project um, and um, have companies propose um, based on their qualifications alone. And that is a different process than the RFP process. The RFP process has a specific project in mind and it's a request for proposal for, the, for that particular project. On the um, qualifications uh, based process, uh, there is no project. It's just, we need these services. We have, you know, like I mentioned earlier in the CIP, uh, we have, you know, for example, 50 projects that we're working on. Not all projects are the same. so. Uh, if we have uh, a, a, um, a qualification, what, what is referred to as an RFQ, sorry, that's what I was trying to, to think, but um, it's a request for qualifications. And uh, so when we get that, uh, those proposals, we evaluate and it works similarly. In that process, it's important to, to note that there is no uh, prices or fee schedules involved. Once you select uh, the uh, consultants that you want to work with and you approve them, then you enter negotiations for, uh, you know, each particular project. For those type of, and for clarification, um, for those type of projects, when we go with the uh, quality base, that's also looking at the quality of the proposal and the quality of the services more so than the fee structure. First and foremost, it's based on the performance and the quality that they can perform versus the cost, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. So that's why I say is sometimes having additional vendors doesn't necessarily provide us the best outcome. Um, and, you know, 
having multiple vendors doesn't necessarily mean that we get the best product because now we're basing our decisions on costs. And that's a factor, but not the factor, at least for myself. Thank you. Thank you for all the discussion. You know, there's actually one, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say is, you know, if if council member uh, Damien's open to the, you know, the, to, to this motion or this, at least a discussion point, uh, you know, if cost is an issue, perhaps, you know, we could have staff, Sam, uh, sit down with the vendor and see if they're able to change their fee schedule um, or any type of reduction in their fee schedule and then bring that back to council, um, you know, per the, per the council member. And then if, you know, if that hasn't satisfied, uh, you know, the council, then we could perhaps look at other uh, options such as, you know, adding additional uh, service providers and so forth um, for these type of services. Because again, one of my concerns is, in general, is, you know, if you have one vendor, then that one vendor is the point, you know, point of contact, right? Especially when we have multiple projects going on throughout the areas. Um, so if, you know, council member Damien's open to that is perhaps, you know, Sam could sit down with the, with this current vendor, see if he could renegotiate prices. Um, cause I believe you did that in the past, Sam, um, after we actually adopted, after the city council adopted the RFP, um, you were able to come back and renegotiate even lower prices last time. And, you know, considering what we're facing with the pandemic, um, they, that might be a, you know, a discussion point for us to, to look at too. So uh, the other point to note is that um, uh, they haven't uh, raised their prices in uh, the last two years. Yeah, and again, it's not, it's not, I haven't even, to be honest with you, I haven't even re looked at the new fee sch schedule. I know that fees were an issue in the past, probably about five years ago. And I actually had a meeting with this contractor earlier this, uh, this afternoon, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm sure that he was concerned because of what he's seen on the agenda. Um, so I did have the opportunity to meet with, uh, with this uh, contractor and I basically told them, hey, look, this is this is the reason why it's on here. Um, it's not for any particular reason. It's not that we want to take contracts away from anybody. Um, and it's not that we, uh, you know, have an issue with the pricing. Like I told him, hey, at the end of the day, we just want to have a great relationship with our working partners. And we want to make sure that our partners in the city are also involved within our community, right? We just want to provide the best for our community. So we want to make sure that they're providing the best work at affordable prices for us because we're the we're the ones overseeing the money for our taxpayers and they want you know they want need to make their money as well i get all of that but it has nothing to do with the pricing right now basically it's just hey you know what let's bring somebody else to the table let's see we can continue working with this with this contractor there's nothing wrong with them at all and i even told them i look forward to working with you guys as well and creating a relationship however i just think it's smart business for the city to have more than just one on-call engineering firm because you just never know you know you just never know if at any point in time we may be beholden to just this one company when we have two others to choose from we can say well you know what if this is how you want to treat us and it's not that i'm saying that this is what's going on but if at only any point in time in the future this company knowing that they're the only company that we're working with decides to say you know what you're going to abide by what my pricing and my quality of work right this is what we have other companies that we can choose from that we have in the pipeline that are currently on call. Not because of the pricing or anything else, just the fact that, hey, let's let's make it smart and let's try to work with these 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 companies. And you know, they didn't see an issue with it because they know it's not, you know, we're not trying to get them out. We just want to make sure that we're we're doing the best for our city as well. And I appreciate those comments, Councilmember Damien. Um, and just for clarification, in their current contract. Uh, and Sam could attest to this is it does already allow us uh, to work with other contractors as needed. So, you know, if Sam or any staff member uh, would ever feel that that was the case, uh, Sam has the ability to go out and look for somebody um, for whatever contract. So just, you know, um, so, you know, in that sense, you know, I just want to make sure that, you know, if you, I don't know if you had the time to, to read their contract or not, but I certainly had, to, I did, uh, I gone through that. Um, so that's why I say is, you know, uh, it's sometimes, you know, it's critical to go through these things because, you know, whatever concerns we may have, uh, those have been alleviated already in the current contract, um, as I mentioned, and it gives uh, staff the flexibility to do that. But I understand your point, sir. 
Thank you. Um, Sam, can you uh, can you reiterate? Uh, they went to RFP. They've been on the contract for three years currently, correct? If That's correct. Right. Uh, right. If we go out for RFP, we're basically just getting RFP quotes. We're not going with anything. I mean, can you just explain the RFP process? Sure. Um, so we would um, put together a call for engineering services um, based on uh, qualifications, as I spoke to earlier, um, and put out a call. Uh, then we get uh, submittals from various firms and we evaluate the firms, we interview them, we see how they, um, you know, if they're a good fit with, with uh, the city, and then we make a recommendation. Uh, to the city council to enter uh, negotiations with them and then bring back a contract. So at the end of the day, it may just end up showing proof or just showing us that the current company that we're with may end up being the best one after we get these uh, these RFPs back, correct? Yeah, they, they would be more than welcome to participate in the call. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I think it's, I and I take, you know, Councilmember Hernandez is a, uh, opinions into consideration because you know like you said he's reviewed the contract i have not had the opportunity to sit and review the entire contract because of the briefings that we've had but i think that there's no harm if, of us just doing an rfp seeing what it comes back with and at that point in time we can have a a maybe closed session discussion and see how we go from there maybe we won't even make any changes but at least this way it gives us options no i understand your uh your points council member uh damian uh they're good um, you know, and I'm, you know, if that's fine if we move with the RFP. My only concern now is because it's an RFP, uh, the vendors that are that exist understand what the pricing scheme is of the current vendor. So that those current vendors that would be submitting for the RFP can now lowball their numbers based on the uh, price schedule that's available through public records and through our council. So that's why, you know, I want to be very careful um, and, you know, give the flexibility, of course, to staff, as you've mentioned, Councilmember Damien, um, that we don't, you know, that you, staff has the ability to use the folks as needed uh, based on uh, based on the need that he requires, right? Because again, this is not an exclusive contract, never has been. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm forward uh, in moving it towards an RFP but I'm very weary that, you know, the contractors that will be submitting, if I, trust me, if I was a good contractor, or if I was a good person that does RFP, I'm going to look at the city's website. I'm going to see exactly what this contract is and what the, what the ski uh, schedule is. And I'm going to make sure that my numbers are well below the current things. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to provide the best services again, but that is a way and, you know, how they can play this type of game. And that's why I'm very hesitant just to do this RFP. Um, but, you know, if that's, uh, you know, if that's the concern of, that's one of my concerns. So I'm just, you know, making note of it for, for all of us to have, you know, this discussion as we're, as we're doing. Um, but, you know, if we move forward with an RFP, again, staff has the ability to, as they currently do now, um, to use anyone they wish to use forward, you know. Uh, Council member Damien, you have the floor. So do we need to make a motion to move forward with the RFP? I believe so. Yes, you would have to make a motion. So um, I make a motion to move forward uh, with the RFP for on well, well, wait, 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 the, Because again, this is not an action item on the agenda, uh, Council member Damien. So they're designed to tell you what, what you want to do. So you you should give direction to bring it back on the agenda on an RFP. Got it. So, so we just give direction to bring it back to. Do we have to take a vote to bring it back on the agenda? Uh, we usually don't, as long as everybody agrees that you know that's not an issue. Does everybody agree that we can bring it back for an agenda item? I have no problem with it, Council Member. As as you mentioned, it's not to take the contract away from them. It's just to do the RFP and you know give the flexibility with uh, staff. So, not a problem. Correct. So we can just direct staff to bring it back. Uh, Shannon, we can bring it back as an agenda item, um, directing staff to go out for RFP. Yes. Great. Uh, Council member Damien, did you have any more comments to make before I? That was it for now, Mayor. Thank you. 
Great. Is there any other comments that any other council member would like to make? Uh, Mayor, I, I have a question. Um, Go ahead, I, Mayor. I've gotten a few texts that I didn't, that we're not on YouTube. Well, we are on YouTube, but they're not allowed to put comments on there. Is there a reason why that's happening? We, um, we shut off the chat um, because there were numerous inappropriate comments, um, comments based on race and sex and gender. And uh, there was a concern that since it's a city broadcast, the city could be responsible um, or liable for that. So Robert, we would be liable as somebody else making these type of comments on YouTube? I, I haven't seen them, but. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen any comments. Yeah, so I you think those any type of comments that Shannon mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, I, can can we try putting the the comments back on YouTube, and if we see and we can remind uh, the public to uh, to be appropriate when making comments, and if we see that um, that continues, then we will take them down. Would that be appropriate, Robert? Uh, yeah, so of course the council can, uh, yes, the council can do that to put it back up and um, and take it down again if it um, uh, it seems inappropriate. Well, I, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about that, but I know a lot of people tune in and they, they uh, since they're not able to be at the meetings, uh, they'd like to make comments on there. Mayor. Yes, Council Member Garcia. I agree with our CEO, Shannon. Um, you yeah, see that where there is inappropriate uh, comments based on sex, gender, um, race, we should not tolerate that. And, you know, it goes back to the sexual harassment issues that we've been experiencing in our city. And we need to be very firm in um, setting the tone of what we allow within our organization. Um, yes, there is freedom of speech, and that's why we provide the public communications. But I have seen some of the comments uh, in the past, and they are completely inappropriate. And if I see that they continue, I will absolutely uh, be very vocal, because that is not something we should tolerate within this organization. This is a governmental organization. This is not in a blog. So uh, we're where, you know, where um, there's mention of, um, you know, any sexual remarks, um, I will be very vocal uh, in, in saying that we should not tolerate that. And I will ask all of you, I will ask all of you to join me in setting those very healthy boundaries. Thank you. Councilwoman Garcia, I uh, completely agree with you. Um, I haven't seen the comments, but like you said, you have, but I completely agree with you. We should not allow that at any given moment. Um, but you said you've seen them. But if we can try to put the comments back on and remind the public uh, they need to uh, express this, themselves appropriately. And if we continue to see that happening, then we will have to stop them from allowing to make comments. But I, I completely agree with you. That should not be allowed at any given time or anywhere for that matter. Um. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I, I see both sides, definitely. I think this might be a, uh, a, a perfect place for you know, Robert, the city attorney, to maybe give us some guidance on this and, and you, know, what, what the, you know, what the outcome of this can be. Maybe we can, um, you know, maybe, maybe the council can have a discussion on this. I know, I know um, you know. Mr. Mayor, if we can. Yes, Council Member uh, Hernandez. Before you make that motion or before we ask Robert, uh, you know, perhaps this is one of those items that we bring back in study session um, for us to, for staff to create a policy uh, so we completely understand uh, who's going to be monitoring it, what's appropriate, what's not, because just turning it on, uh, you know, I have major concerns as uh, Councilmember Garcia has mentioned. I've seen those comments. I've had people send me these type of comments. Um, and to have something like that be allowed uh, sponsored on our city government platform, uh, it's un un unacceptable. Um, so perhaps we could ask staff to, you know, direct uh, a policy and more importantly, uh, you know, share with us, you know, in the future as to who would actually be monitoring uh, the thread. Um, 
because again, part of what we're supposed to be doing is to provide the access for people to uh, view and to listen into the into our uh, meetings, which we're doing. Providing a chat um, is something that's not required uh, for us. So if we can bring that back as a discussion and you know with uh, with the attorney's assistance, as you've mentioned, um, I think that will save us. Uh, a lot of headaches, but also protect us from any potential lawsuits or, uh, you know, harassments from folks uh, that are on this platform, uh, listening and watching, uh, you know, our council meetings. Mayor? Um, yes, Council Member Avila. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Yes, and I agree. And that's why I uh, referred to, to the attorney to ask um, about uh, if that was correct, if we can do, if we can take those uh, comments off. So, so yeah, let's have a discussion. Let's see uh, what's allowable and what's not allowable. And then we can move forward from there. If yeah. And I, and I think that's a, uh, it's, it's a fair uh, position. I know that, that this is an issue, not just for us, but for a lot of cities. And, and I know that sometimes it, it kind of looks a little bit odd when, when you try to, you know, follow a city on social media or, or some type of government and they don't allow any type of comments or things like that. So uh, by all means, I think um, the best thing is to, uh, look into this and, and see how we can maybe have a healthy discussion if it, if it helps constituents engage and, and it helps them, you know, uh, get on and, and, and really engage with the, with, with city, with city council and the city meetings and, and talk about what we're talking about. I mean, it might be a plus, right? So definitely, um, you know, it's, it's a, something to discuss. So yeah, why not? I, I'll make a motion that we should uh, um, look into this in a study session with, with the, with the guidance of our, of our city attorney. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you. Is there any objections? No. So I believe uh, that is a uh, that is a motion that passes. Any Mayor. other? Uh, I believe that was yes. That's direction. That's direction. Oh, sorry. That's direction. Direction for our city attorney and city staff. Um, city council. Yes. City council member Garcia, did you have a comment to make? Oh yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, because it wasn't agendized. Um, I also I wanted to point out that yeah, it's something that we can support um, and provide direction. And I think that it's very important because we are dealing with sexual harassment lawsuits. And uh, it's something that we have to be, you know, very mindful of, very thoughtful of, very, very careful of. Uh, we do provide public communications um, per, you know, Brown Act and per state law, our local laws. So there's, there's ample opportunity to participate and to uh, provide communication uh, but when, you know, when, when, if you've seen some of the comments, um, knowing that we have sexual harassment lawsuits, um, past and current, you know, we, we do have to be very responsible in uh, this governmental organization and how, what we, what we allow within our culture, uh, what behaviors, I mean, you know, there's a reason why we have sexual harassment orientation within our organization. Um, and so, you know, we just have to be very careful about um, tolerating any, any, any type of behavior that is inappropriate when it comes to sex, gender, race, um, and, uh, you know, any, any of those um, that could, are very, very, you know, can be, dis there's discrimination based on any of those uh, topics. And so we got, we have to be very careful, very mindful. This is not a private blog. This is a, a government agency. By all means, I, I agree. I agree with, uh, with, you know, with all my colleagues, uh, but I, I do believe that the best way to do this is have a discussion, uh, not make a, such a, a, a decision right away. It's important to have a discussion, make sure that we are all on, on board with this. Um, you know, is there any other comments? I just want to apologize, Mike. Something happened to my camera. Um, no, I'll make no sure worries. it's fixed for the next meeting. Thank all right. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, Council Member Hernandez. Thank you. Uh, Shannon, perhaps uh, you and I had an earlier conversation in regards to solicitate, solicitators um, and what is required for permits. Uh, you know, I've been receiving phone calls, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm at home, uh, you know, we'll see uh, individuals coming to our homes, uh, you know, trying to sell uh, various products, goods, or services, anywhere from, you know, doing your roof, we can do it, you know, putting solar panels, doing whatever it might be. Uh, Shannon, can you just provide, you know, a, just a quick uh, a summary as, as to what type of 
uh, actions uh, businesses should have and what we can you know perhaps uh, put on our social media accounts so uh, our seniors and others uh, understand you know who they can call and what they should be doing um, or asking for you know the, for folks because again we have a, a practice but it certainly is not being used and uh, I just want to make sure that uh, we do follow what we have. Sure, thank you, council member. Um, and yes, we have heard um, concerns from seniors and from other residents uh, about these contractors going door to door um, and um, you know, sometimes asking for cash payments up front. Um, sometimes they're legitimate, but sometimes it appears that they, you know, it might be a scam. Uh, so all solicitors going door to door are required to have a business license. Um, so we're going to do some social media, get the word out to the seniors, um, letting them know that. And so what residents can do is ask to see a copy of the business license. Um, also, there have been some scams where the contractors, um, you know, it appears like they're with Southern California Edison or a utility, but they're not really, not, not really. So, um, you know, educating the seniors a little bit on, um, you know, when to take these people seriously and when to ask for credentials and that type of thing. So yeah, just getting the word out. Um, and then also letting people know that if there are vendors that are going through the neighborhood without business licenses, um, which means they probably aren't legitimate, um, they can call community enhancement and they will respond and try to contact the person and, and get information from them and let them know that uh, a business license is required to do that. Thank you. And again, this is not uh, to add business permits or license for, you know, uh, our school children that are selling um, when that time comes back again, uh, when they're selling chocolates and so forth, because uh, I depend on them to, uh, keep me uh, moving with the chocolate or the boxes that I essentially buy every year. <laughs> Great. Okay, is there any any more comments? Before you close the meeting, Mayor, one more, sorry. Don't I just worry, I have another one too. Like, don't, don't worry. I just wanna make sure everybody gets to say what they need to say. Okay, I just wanna, because this is our last meeting of the year, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I know it will be very different this year because we won't be spending time in large groups with our families. We have to stay with our immediate families to make sure that we're all safe, that we keep our family safe. And at the same time, we keep the rest of the community safe. But I wanna wish you the best. I wanna wish you a lot of health, lots of love and abundance of, of fun because you can still have fun even though we're, we're staying at home, we can still have fun with our family. And I pray that the, the new year brings health to everybody and and brings this pandemic to a halt because I know it's affecting a lot of us, but remember to stay positive, look to the future and have a Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. That's a, that's a great comment. Uh, uh, I think I've asked multiple times, but before I make my last comment, any other council members wishing to make a comment? No, okay, uh, so I know now I feel kind of guilty because uh, Mayor Potem brought up that, you know, this is our last meeting for the year. So there's a, some time and we've given, you know, we've given city staff a lot of homework, but I, I do want to make one more motion. I, I see that other city council meetings are, are, uh, are, are together. They're not through Zoom. And I, and I think that that really adds to the environment. I think it's a, it's a lot better to have, you know, our, our special meetings or our city council meetings in, in close, uh, with, in close proximity. So I, I would like to, I would like to make a motion to direct city staff to see if, if we can find uh, safe guidelines to do so. And maybe we can have it on a voluntary basis. Maybe we can have uh, people who are willing to, uh, some of the council to come uh, to the chambers and, and me and then whoever doesn't feel comfortable can stay at Zoom. I don't know how all the other council members feel about that. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. Personally, uh, Mr. Mayor, and um, you know, given what we're seeing with COVID, uh, you know, I wouldn't, and I don't believe uh, you're asking for uh, the residents to come to City Hall um, whatsoever, but uh, I, I feel a little bit more secure uh, <laughs> uh, being at home and, you know, keeping more than my six, this, six feet distance from uh, my colleague, uh, Councilmember Garcia, or uh, even if, uh, if it was you and I in the, in the office, I prefer to um, keep my distance uh, given everything that's going on. Yes, my 
Yeah, this is Council Member Monica Garcia. I, I certainly will not be uh, attending in person and I um, I would not want to ask our staff to be present in person, um, especially given, you know, the the rise of COVID right now and the uncertainty of when <clears throat> this peak will um, taper off. So I will not be there in person and I will not in, I will actually advocate that our staff uh, continue to work remotely and socially distance. So. Uh, by all means, I understand, and you know, we've been asking people to stay safe and follow the guidelines. Uh, my concern is that you know we're having we're having conversations, we're having closed sessions, uh, you know, from you know from the rooms of our of our home, whether it's an apartment complex or on a on a long, you know, there is a lot of information being uh, you know uh, shared between us through through Zoom meetings, and I and I do think that it's potential, you know, uh, there's always a potential in in you know cyber. In cyber meetings, and that's one of my concerns. I don't know if any other other council members have anything to say about that. I, I do see your, I do see where you're coming from, Mayor. I know that there's, uh, you know, there's especially like closed session items, you know, like for for instance, me, I need to make sure that I'm in my office alone. But <clears throat> due to the recent spike, I mean, we're at almost what 5,900 cases as of today. I think we have 116 deaths in Baldwin Park. I think that maybe what we should you know, we should do is just continue doing it on Zoom because, um, you know, I mean, as it is right now, I'm looking at my screen, I believe there's 20 of us on here. So, you know, even if we try to spread each other out, you know, we're still in the same room, whatever it is, I honestly, I feel more comfortable uh, continuing to do it remotely until we can at least, you know, get some of these vaccines out and, you know, start getting back to some type of normality. But in the meantime, I would have to agree with the council member Hernandez and Garcia to kind of keep our keep our distance until we can, uh, you know, minimize the spread of this virus. Yes, yes, by all means. I just, you know, we, I have seen a lot of other cities be able to be able to handle that. So I thought it'd, it'd be an interesting to uh, look into that. Uh, but you are right. We have given the city count, we have given our city staff enough homework and we've, uh, we've held them here long enough, right? So with that being said, this is our last uh, meeting for the year as, as uh, Mayor Pro Tem has stated. So I do want to wish everybody a, a, a uh, great last few weeks of 2020. Oh, I got it to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she is. So uh, enjoy the last two weeks of 2020. By far, 2020 has been a challenge for all of us, but it has been, uh, it has left a lot of room for us to grow. I encourage you to really uh, appreciate the people that are around you and what you have, even if this year has been tough. Uh, there is a lot to uh, to learn this year, and I and I hope we we've, we've all taken advantage of it and, and really tried to be as optimistic as possible. Uh, and I, I'm sure, like many of you, I too am looking forward to 2021 and the and the great things we can achieve together. So um, I believe no more no more comments are by the council. So at this point, I move to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody. Holidays. Thank you, to staff. Stay safe. Be healthy, everybody. Thank you to staff for all your work this year. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Merry Thank Christmas. You, Good night. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Yeah. Good night. Merry Christmas. Housing, Take care. Housing. I'm sorry. Hold. Housing. Lulu. Yeah. yeah. Housing and finance. We need to. We need to. That's finish. right. Housing. Yeah, yeah. Finance. We have housing and finance. Yeah, but it's open, but it hasn't been done. Yes. Merry Christmas to everybody. And happy healthy. What's that? Do we I'm sorry. What's that? Mark. Yeah, I was. I was surprised. <laughs> All right, I'm going to email the doctor to Tally so he can get to work, and uh, I can just call it a night. Sounds good. Thanks again for uh, helping me out. I appreciate it. My pleasure. I need, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mark, oh, talk to you tomorrow. Mark, please don't end the meeting. I need, I need, I need counsel to come back. Please don't end the meeting. Mayor. I need, hold on. Mayor. Mayor, do you like, uh, Nuru, I'm going to keep this meeting running so you can come and then to return the meeting. Yes, thank you. I, I, we, we need to adjourn the other two or okay. or at least All right. okay. to move it to the next meeting. So next, thank you.
He's logging back on right now. Do we have a quorum? Not yet. So we need the mayor and Paul and Monica. We only have Alejandro right now. Okay. Danny's on his way back. Let me call Paul. I think uh, Lulu's calling mayor. I talked to the mayor and he's logging back on. Okay, great. Well, as soon as we get three, we can start and do those, and I'll see if we can get home. Mark, can you tell if we lost the interpreter? No, she's, I'm here. She's still here. Okay, good. Are you, are you sure you're on the right meeting? Oh, you can yes. hear me? Yes. Yeah. Mark, um, is the mayor on? Not yet. Not yet. He's, he said he's logged on. He's shown as an attendee. Yeah, he, he, I, I allow him to join now. Okay, can you hear yes. me now? Yes, I can hear you, man. Great. What happened? Um, Everybody got too excited, huh? Yes, we need one more, Mayor. We need one more for a quorum. No worries. Danny's logging on also. Oh. Okay, so I think uh, Council Member Damien is logging back on. I haven't seen him yet, so I'm waiting. We were just too excited to start celebrating the holidays. <laughs> I get, and it wasn't just me, right? It was everybody, so that's a good, yeah. that's a plus. It was. Oh, 
Yeah, it was Alejandra's great speech about the holidays. Yeah, she 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 pumped everybody up. We're like, let's celebrate now. I'm sorry. He said okay. we're Hey, all right so we have quorum correct yes, yes we do mayor okay so um i mean i don't see okay so at this point i will open up the housing authority regular meeting um and i guess i will make a motion to uh excuse uh council members hernandez and garcia do i have a second second and any objections no and then is there any uh, City Clerk, is there any public communications for this meeting? There are none. Great. So we move on from public communications. Uh, is there anybody wishing to pull any items from the consent calendar? No. At this uh, moment, I make a motion to pass consent calendar. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Great. And at this point, I move to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. Any objections? No, so uh, this meeting is adjourned. And now at this point, I would like to open up the Ballpark Finance Authority regular meeting. Uh, and I would make a motion to um, excuse council members Garcia and Hernandez. Is there a second? Second. Any objection? No, okay. Um, do we have to do a roll call? Sorry, I didn't even ask about that. No, you opened up the meeting concurrently earlier and then you did the roll call. So I think you're good on that. Great, okay. Uh, any public communication, city clerk? There are none. Perfect. Uh, at this moment, we will move over to consent calendar. Is there any items the council would like to pull? No, uh, at this mo moment, I make a motion to pass a consent calendar. Can I get a second? Second. Any objections? No. So we pass consent calendar. And at this moment, I move to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Any objections? No. And I believe we are all set for tonight. Uh, and, and now it's Merry Christmas. Yeah. And anybody correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, so at this point, I think we're, we're done. Second time is a charm. So uh, meetings are adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Good night. Good night.